That's the worst looking past I've ever seen in my life. Hello everybody, I know what you're thinking first up. Why the heck do you have a pan of spinach on wilting? Hmm, we'll come on to that in just a bit. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, you might remember recently I've been doing a series of videos where I've been getting some bargains that really did smack my head. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, off of eBay, right? And actually the last two videos I did, we did a, uh, a little kebab making machine, which is phenomenal. Uh, and then we did a mac and cheese maker. I wore this top both times. I thought, yeah, let's keep it similar. This machine that I'm carrying like a ghetto box is a pasta maker. Uh, I need to refresh myself uh, what it actually should retail at because it's an unopened birthday present that I got off eBay for £22. It's basically a pimped up Play-Doh machine. 169 quid listed as an unwanted birthday present. We've all been there. My father-in-law, in fact, bought my mother-in-law, they always tell me this story, pots and pans for Christmas, which went down, yeah, like an emoji poo sandwich. So this thing, Mrs. Barry couldn't understand why I bought it, and I said the pasta pun for silly reasons. She's like, what's it for? I said, it's 22 quid. It's a bargain. I can sell it myself and make a bit of money on it, but also, you literally put your fresh dough in, you make your fresh pasta. If you've never done that before, people say, what's the, one of the coolest things to cook uh, for, one, for your first time? Make some fresh pasta. It's like making Play-Doh, as I say, and this will churn it out into not just one, but five, I think, different types of pasta. Spaghetti, fettuccine, penne, penne for your thoughts, uh, uh, lasagna, it does sheets of lasagna. Like pasta making is actually quite fun. If you've never done it, I've done videos on the channel here before, but you basically effectively normally need like a pasta making machine like this, which has got like a nozzle on it, which has got different thicknesses. So you make the dough, you go the widest setting, you wind it through, and then you keep threading it through, and then you go lower and lower and lower until it's super thin. That's how you make it, and then you can cut it into all your different shapes. So I can imagine some hardcore Italian people looking at this thinking, oh my gosh, you're an impasta. So just as I open this, if you've got any funny, unwanted uh, birthday present, Christmas gifts or whatever, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear, I'd love to browse through it as I, as I mange on my pasta later. <laughs> Look at this. It's got a toothbrush. I love how it's all freshly packaged. Look. There's one of the nozzles. I don't know which one this is. Does it say on it? It does not say on it. Brilliant. <laughs> so we're going to stick these on the ends and that will effectively make our shapes. Oh, there's another one. Oh, I think that could be the penny, looking at the shape of it. You see that? Oh, my gosh, this is quite heavy. So it should be for that price. Well, not the price I paid. Okay, so you've got the big fat nozzle thing, and these are the ends that go into it. So it would sort of push in like this. This one is spaghetti. Uh, this one is fettuccine. Then it's got this. Uh, but then it also it's got this that goes in there. So I think you can get two different sizes of penny pasta, like that. So that's... That's how you do it. And I guess this thing, because it comes out so thin, is the lasagna sheet. So I'm going to pick a couple of these. I'm definitely going to do the spaghetti and the penny. Um, maybe lasagna? I don't know. So that's how they sort of work. And I've just noticed on the top, it's got like a really sort of funky... It's like, oh yeah, if we put like a play and pause button on it, we can charge people loads more money. It looks like some sort of MP3 player or something, but quite futuristic looking. Let's get it going. Hang on just a second, Boston. No wonder it's as expensive as it is. This doesn't just, you don't shove the dough in ready done and it does it. This will actually make the dough for you. I've just read this here. I can pour the flour and the other ingredients in and it does everything. What? That's crazy. I gotta be honest, I've been reading this for ages and they've got like two different cups with like volumes on sizes saying, oh, just do this. It's really, really confusing. Yeah, I kind of don't trust it because like on one side, it's got this mixture of egg and water measurement. I don't know if you can see that in the light there slightly. And then on the back, it's got like a, a flour measurement of 200 grams, but then you've also got this flour thing as well. Apparently this should hold 200 grams. To be fair, it's looking quite accurate. Yeah, all right, that'll sort of do. Snow capped, but yes, 200 grams that is. It's saying I need 80 mils of water and egg total in there. So normally what I use is just eggs and flour, but we are saying water as well. Oh, what a sound. Oh, so I've only got to top it up a little bit to that line. You see that? This is kind of exciting. It feels so lazy, but if this works, this is genius. We're gonna, I think, have to go with spaghetti first front up. So that's the spaghetti one. Oh yes, look at that. <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> Doesn't feel like we're making pasta, does it? So A, Schel oh no, that's German. Is that German? Schelbenschiedemuschen? 
making pasta. Plug in, open the lid and pour in the flour. Close the lid. Why would I just add the flour and close the lid? Surely I want other stuff in there as well. Select auto. Oh, there's auto. I'm pretty certain that needs something else in there. <laughs> it's mixing that flour around beautifully. Slowly pour the liquid into the opening in the lid. Oh, here. Oh, how do I open this? <laughs> I didn't actually look how this lid opens. Do we... Oh no, there's literally holes in it. What? Surely they don't just fall through those little gaps there. But, but that yolk isn't gonna go through that, is it? It's going in. Fair play, it is going in. There you go, oh look! It's finally succumbed. This is so weird. Look at that yolk, huh? Yeah, I'm not to warn you, but it does say in three minutes, pasta will emerge from the disc at the front. I haven't even got anything there to catch it. There we go. Huh? Never in doubt. <laughs> look, that is quite clearly not pasta in there. Tell you what, <laughs> it's doing something. That's the worst looking pasta I've ever seen in my life. It looks like spaghetti. It's staying together. I don't know why it's so tough because when I make pasta normally, I'll knead the flour and the eggs together and then I let it rest, which kind of lets it kind of, it's more rigid at first for the first half an hour. You kind of let it rest uh, for about half an hour and that softens it and lets it be a bit more, well, soft. Whereas that just looks quite, rigid you know that's a like wire as the pasta comes out cut it to your preferred size i haven't been doing that all right we've got to do like a haircut here we go <laughs> short back and sides the next time you go into that flashy pasta restaurant imagine a guy out the back just going uh how many is it four people yeah that'll do well i don't know what that's doing but it does say to um not let it dry out so you do want to keep it cool but also to sprinkle it with flour to stop it sticking together. Now I've probably left that a little too late. Uh, oh no, it's okay. It's actually all right. And there's more coming out, look at that. There's quite a significant beep then. I think that's just meant, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> pasta done, pasta done. Right, okay, cool. One last haircut. Brilliant, missed the plate. But I think now I can see why it comes with like a brush and all that, but look at all this gunk. I actually do need to clean this out quite properly because I will be giving this away on Patreon, but I'm using this brush and that's done a really good job. I was just thinking, oh, I've got to clean this bit and look, that bit just comes right out. That's amazing. All right, apparently, oh <laughs> yes, this thing's coming out. It makes it really easy to clean it. I've got a little bit of pasta dough on my lens. Sorry about this. We're gonna try and do some lasagna sheets. Okay, so I don't know what this is gonna turn out like. And I was saying earlier that you can flavor pasta, hence the spinach, which we'll do in a moment. This is what we're gonna use here. This is some sun-dried tomato paste, or you can use tomato puree to get a tomato flavored and colored pasta. Yeah, probably about two tablespoons. And I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> Press the play button. There we go. And then again, we slowly add the mixture in. Oh, that's going in way better. Definitely beat your eggs. So if our calculations are correct, I can just about see a red tinge in it. We should in a moment have some red tomato flavored lasagna sheets coming out of this thing. <laughs> it's starting to push something out. This is like childbirth in the movies. It takes 10 seconds. In real life, it takes a long time. <laughs> It's all droopy. No. I mean, it's still working, sort of. Ah. Oh. I think it might need a little bit more flour. Oh, I can get my hands in there. Oh yeah, that's way too wet. Oh dear. Oh no. 
I'll add some more flour in. That's quite clever though, how the power shot off when I took the plastic lid off. That is not a lasagna sheet. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a man flu protest, doesn't it? I mean, it is properly coming out now. Look at that. I just can't, can't really plate it up. We'll still boil it though. We have to. I have to have some sort of perspective here because I was ready to make homemade dough from scratch completely. I did not realize this machine made it all just by adding the ingredients in, which is amazing. It's taking some of the, like, the interest and the, like, the manual bit away from it, but maybe that justifies the cost a little bit. Okay, this is all of the pasta that I got out of that. And I'm feeling a little bit sorry for this machine. So we're gonna try doing the tomato one again, but proper old school and then just stick it through the machine. So wedding ring off and we're gonna go like proper old school, flour right down. And what you tend to do is sort of lift the flour into it with a fork. It does get messy. I'm trying to do this with my, why am I doing this with my other hand? No! Right, get it into the flour. And this is where I would normally add my flavoring. So I'm gonna get my tomato puree, which you can counter then with the flour. So if you need to get it a little drier, because that will actually add moisture like we saw before. You can just put a bit more flour through it, okay? That smells amazing. Hoping that by doing this a little bit, making sure the consistency is right, that that machine might actually love me back. There we go, so about, <laughs> that's probably been like 10 minutes of kneading later. A Little bit of extra flour down just to make sure it's not too sticky. And I'm gonna wrap this now and leave it for 30 minutes. And that's quite difficult to do one-handed. Looks like a haggis. So there is a much easier way of doing that method we just did, and we're gonna do that with the spinach. So this is spinach that I wilted earlier, and I'm just squeezing all of the moisture out of that as much as possible. It holds it so well, like a sponge. And the eggs. Uh, we stick the spinach in as well. Oh my gosh, this is surprisingly full. <laughs> The only problem is sometimes getting it out. Okay, got a little bit of flour there because you do need to do one sort of final knead anyway. It still feels a teeny bit wet. So the flour helps with that too to dry it out. Just an initial little bit like that. And then you just wrap that in cling film. I don't know if you've seen pasta making machines they have in some restaurants. They actually have a rotating blade so that they can actually periodically cut off the pasta into the right shapes. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Hey, eh? that's looking good. Sticking it near the front now, come on. Maybe there's too much in there. I'm gonna take a little bit out. This is perfect texture for pasta when I make it normally. It could be a teeny bit dry. Uh, ah. Look, that is my sun-dried tomato pasta. Look, I hope you guys are hungry because that's the pasta we've got. Do you know what I might do is just stick the spinach mixture in there now and just see if that pushes it out. I don't think it will. Okay, it's just finished beeping and it's just not working. So the first one, the spaghetti kind of worked. The one where we added the tomato paste, like it says in the manual, no. And then the other two, although they're perfect as they are, we're gonna have pasta for the rest of the week here. It's gonna be amazing. Just not pushing through there. So I'll get all that out, but let's still cook the first two batches we did anyway and see what they're like. So we've got quite the selection here. This is some spaghetti that I've actually like separated, okay? So that's going in loose. I'm gonna also grab a clump that I haven't separated. Uh, let's go for this one. See that, how they're all joined together still? And see if when it cooks, it separates. Uh, <laughs> these are our lasagna sheets, look at these. Oh my gosh, I just stick that in. The good thing about fresh pasta is that it does uh, cook very quickly indeed. When it floats to the top, it's pretty much ready. Um, but then this is the stuff that I did by hand. Look at this, it's gorgeous. We'll just stick one of those in, just to have something nice to look at and this should cook in a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh wow, like the, the bits that I didn't separate for the spaghetti, I'll just try and get a bit out. It's gonna be really hot, yep. 
It's all congealed together. <laughs> okay, let's just ultimately see one strand of spaghetti if this is any good. Oh, it's blooming nice. It's cooked really soft and tender. The texture's really not, to be fair, that is decent spaghetti. I don't know how we've done it, but it's okay. My spinach blobs that I just chucked together. That's a new name, blobs. Mmm. It's that little bit more flavour. And I don't really want to... <laughs> the lasagna sheet is kind of... I'm not even sure if that bit's cooked because it's so thick. The lasagna sheets will um, we'll leave, but we'll try um, some of my own stuff. Oh. It even smells tomatoey. Mmm. I can just about taste it. I just got a nice little piece of sun-dried tomato in there. I think next time I put a little bit more in there just to compensate for that and with more flour, but we kind of winged that a little bit. I know how much you guys enjoy this playlist. The other two that I got off eBay were absolute bargains, whereas today, is this worth 170 pounds? Um, probably not. Is it worth 22? Yeah, maybe just to kind of experiment and have some fun with it. And that spaghetti, it didn't look like spaghetti when it first came out, but it tastes absolutely delicious. So 22 just about, but the 170, I can't really justify that. So I've kind of lost out today. The world of eBay has got me. I bought an actual lemon. Seriously though, I do hope this video has opened your eyes to the world of homemade pasta because it is so easy to do it and customise and you really enjoy it. It's one of my favourite things to do. Don't forget to subscribe for regular videos if you haven't already and follow me on social media and I'll see you very soon. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Hello. Welcome to my editing bit. I'm editing the video and I want to give it one more go. Let's go. So I'm up there editing and I'm looking at the first two and I'm thinking, wow, they actually did work and they were both the machine's actual recipes. The, the two that didn't work so well were my own ones which work outside of the machine normally. So I've got to give it another go. And they've got a beetroot pasta, which is basically plain flour. So I've got that there already. And this is one egg beaten again. Now, instead of water, we've added beetroot juice to this, which is basically the same thing they use in food dye, but you can get it in a jar. So that's basically there. It's a bit dark and playing around with the cameras, but that is beetroot juice and egg. That's it. So let's just jump to it. Washing this thing up and all the bits, let me tell you, after doing it four times, it's a little bit of a nightmare, but let's, let's put it around the right way, first of all. I'm confident this is gonna work. Okay, so just like before, flour down, lid on, auto mode, spinny spinny, but we're gonna slowly add in the beetroot and egg mixture. And that is it, it looks pretty gory. But that should give us beetroot pasta. <laughs> Come on! Look! That's working! So is this now worth £170? It actually works. You must stick to the recipes in the book, which I find quite disappointing. You want to be able to stick your own stuff in there, I think. But it does. I've just got to stay here forever cutting pasta, but there we go. <laughs> you got 22 quid I can borrow?